so the praise actually comes from Ej Temel Karan's book uh, *The Insane and the Melancholy*, and refers to the uh, the way in which um, kind of cultural identity in Turkey can be quite transient. Um, so first, um, just quickly start with cultural heritage plays a crucial role within the political discourses because it frames and structures power relationships that determine access to space, financial resources, and material resources to expression and effects of experience. Um, in Istanbul, freedom of expression can be suppressed, and heritage as a state is often a state narrative which is not necessarily accountable to the people. Um, in many of the narratives, um, many of the kind of more multi vocal narratives, especially minority narratives, are um, subservient to the largest kind of state narratives of um, kind of Turkish history, as it were. Um, although this paper focuses on um, the lived experiences of heritage within the nation and engages with the material of the city, which has come to define the identity of the new residents. Um, basically, looking at the way in which small communities and individuals um, look to their heritage and to the city for their own identity, especially those who aren't or don't feel part of the larger state narrative. Um, so, since the accession of the AKP to power, um, their economy is based on the pouring of concrete. Out of 121 high rise buildings in Istanbul, 117 are AKP constructed. Um, hundreds of malls, mosques, and residential redevelopment projects have seen the city disappear into scaffolding, and the noise of construction cannot be escaped. Mega construction projects that shape the face of the city um, are also on the AKP agenda. Um, stuff like the Marmaray, the Third Bridge, the Third Airport, etc., etc., and Al Istanbul have seen kind of archaeology um, come into conflict often with the idea of the state narrative, which is how they want uh, the new kind of uh, neo Ottomanism to, to proceed and bind the new country together, or the idea of the new country. Um, especially when Erdogan says stuff like, uh, their pots and pans when referring to the huge kind of amount of archaeological material uncovered at Yeni Kapı. Um, so although at the moment it's protected by quite stringent laws and very good archaeologists in Turkey, um, coming from up high and as Erdogan gains more power in the state, kind of becomes slightly more authoritarian. Um, this can change, and uh, probably will. And as Orhan Pamuk says, um, the monumental buildings that dominate the neighbourhoods and entire cities do not bring out the humanity of the city at all. Um, on the contrary, they quash it. Instead, we need to honour the neighbourhoods and the streets and the homes and uh, look at how they instead um, come to define what it is to be Turkish in the modern world and to live in Istanbul. Um, projects like... Oh, sorry, I didn't show you. So this is just a quick map of uh, um, all the projects that are going on currently in Istanbul. Each one of those black spaces and all yellow areas defines a huge project um, that's undergoing. And that's supplemented in turn by vast amounts of urban construction that are going on on a very small scale, so just basically ripping down any old house and building it up. Um, these are just the mega projects. Um, so Sulukule is a good example of what happens when the state wants to basically make clash out of um, a uh, out of a district which doesn't necessarily conform to the identity of, of Turkishness. Um, plans for redevelopment of Sulukule were revealed in late 2005, and the area was demolished through 2009 to 10. 571 predominantly Romani houses were destroyed, displacing over 5,000 residents. The area has stood the, as the home of the oldest sedentary Romani community for over a thousand years, um, and was defined by UNESCO as a thousand years of Romani cultural heritage. Um, the Sulu Kulej residents were kind of offered strange deals um, concerning their moving and only if they owned property basically were they allowed to then buy a new property but uh, not on the kind of same level and um, the new houses retailed at over 10 times um, per square meter than the residents were paid. Um, in doing so the urban regeneration not only gained loads of cash um, but also uh, kind of encompassed uh, the Romani kind of culture into kind of formal avenues of, of 
a state. Um, often these kind of like lower levels minorities have kind of just been left um, to be impoverished um, by themselves. But now in these areas, they've been kind of being forced out. Um, and this kind of goes on. This is not in Isidu Kule, this is Thal Labasha, Ork Midan, and other kind of areas that are in the very center of the city. Um, so it is formalization of the heritage narratives which currently breeds such discontent amongst these communities, especially um, places like the Roma who have kind of a very vibrant and not necessarily um, Turkish uh, uh, inclusion. Um, this is not the first time that the city has undergone radical change. Um, in the actual construction of the Republic in the first place, uh, the city was, well, the capital was moved from Istanbul to Ankara for the precise reason of actually moving away from what um, what, what was perceived to be old um, and not <coughs> modern, not progressive. Um, Istanbul still became a, uh, a very center of industry and violence, essentially. Um, so whereas the city during the Ottoman period existed as 50 to 60% Muslim Turkish, um, that then grew to 99% um, due to pogroms and expulsions of Greeks, uh, Armenians, and many minorities basically being subsumed into, into Turkishness. Um, this came through kind of eth economic stripping and, and kind of social also um, like lack of uh, inclusion. Um, Places that the government kind of, at that period, during that kind of period of redevelopment, actually grew. Um, places like Gezi Park came to kind of be a symbol of, of this new city and, and actually redefine relationships amongst these communities and the, uh, the other communities. So, so what you ended up having was kind of a synthesis between this old city and the new city and these old communities and the new communities. Um, and, you know, kind of... A, a mix, let's say. Um, but many of the kind of older generations still mourned the soul of the city um, as it's dilapidated and still do today. Um, if you go around in the city, you can often speak to people who say that you know they don't necessarily know the heritage of the uh, of the area that they were, but you can speak to their next door neighbour or their friend who is Greek or Armenian, and they would be able to tell you the truth behind this. So this kind of synthesis exists of these two or many, many, many more narratives that are overlapping and interlinking in the city and causing these kind of strange um, micro-narratives, let's say. Uh, but conversely, um, the actual archaeology of the city is, um, as Erdogan exactly says, an ideology. Um, and so in making plans for Taksim, making plans for Gezi Park, uh, to have a barracks, to, ha to reinstate the old Ottoman barracks, um, which was actually also the first football stadium. Um, he's directly going against, uh, not only, well, kind of weirdly going against the archeology, span but also for his idea of what the heritage should be, i.e. the Ottomanization, and the stuff which directly contrasts with the, the idea of Turkishness but simultaneously doesn't actually link back up with the kind of inclusion of minorities into society, although it originally started as intended to be like that. Um, places like Gezi Park have become new lifeblood for the city, a new kind of area of liberalization, a new mixed synthesis between these things. So you have LGBTs and other minority communities also existing in this new Republican space. Um, and so being targeted again by Erdogan, uh, He's also trying to get rid of this new, progressive, kind of minority inclusivity of things, um, which resulted uh, in uh, the Gezi protests, which were in 2013. I think that maybe quite a lot of people know about those. Um, so they kind of grew out of a lot of different narratives, a lot of different directions, including suppression of minorities and general public space where people could practice non not necessarily the same um, behavior, a different parts of cultural heritage. The Sulu Kule has turned into a music venue um, where these kind of Romani music and even contemporary versions of Romani music, including hip hop, came to dominate the space and became very well known 
as um, as a form of intangible cultural heritage which is being paraded around in spite of the uh, the huge amounts of government attacks and pressure, and of course the loss of their actual ideological homeland of the Sinhua, which was then at that point uh, already destroyed, um, and they had been scattered some 30 kilometers. Actually, most of the families from who had been scattered ended up moving back to poor residents, but still pressured. Um, so the soul of Sinhua continued in the outlying um, other districts, which became a very interesting thing unto itself. Um, so the public appreciation of space really hit high in Gezi and uh, re-evaluated what the space was supposed to be and, and people realised that the space wasn't necessarily the same for everybody. Um, dialogues which didn't usually exist or didn't typically exist between kind of larger scale ideas of republicanism, nationalism, minorities, LGBTs, football forums, all started talking and appreciating each other's um, kind of position in in the city um, and it kind of evolved after the protest ended to this lo last quote um, which is wherever you are chant slogan prepare a banner and take a picture of it tie a cloth around a tree take to the parks organize a forum talk with one another sing our songs Gezi is everywhere you are so people were aware that this can occur through the materiality of the city and actually fundamentally it is the materiality of the city which is going to make a difference there um, and so this evolved onto the streets um, graffiti such as this, such as this is our meaning graffiti in um, Kutush, um, showing and kind of appreciating other parts of Armenian culture. Um, so, and by reproducing their own material memory, they place themselves firmly in the landscape, combating the larger scale kind of destruction of the city and reconstruction. So they're producing their own narratives, their own material narratives in the city. Um, the FFA's desire to uproot and to disperse cohesive sub uh, subaltern groups is stronger than ever, though. Because of this, uh, because of the movement to Gezi and, and the aftermath um, with stuff like this, um, they target are now targeting spaces which can perform in this kind of multivocal way. Um, and so by smacking a massive great mosque right on Taksim um, and tearing down the Afim, um, the Ataturk Cultural uh, Mekizi, an opera house or ballet of Pandora Arena for cultural heritage to occur. Um, he's essentially placing and completely overriding um, what was essentially and is the spiritual home of, of this kind of latter unity. Uh, and so through targeting the space, and you know, and he is essentially, and, and they are essentially changing fundamentally the way in which. Um, these cultures, these kind of smaller narratives are kind of appearing um, in Sulukule. Um, a Roma guy said, our houses have courtyards. These courtyards serve many functions. We used to wash our dead there. We had fruit trees, mulberry, cherry, and plum trees. We used to have animals, chickens, bears, horses, donkeys. We live in apartments now, but living in apartments is not our way of life. We do not have this culture. Um, and this isn't just in Sulukule. Like this is occurring on a wider scale um, and without kind of acknowledging that these micro narratives are incredibly important actually to the production of smaller kind of forms of heritage or, or less grand heritage we always think about stuff like um, the Hagia Sophia and the Kunstbach Kirchen and the Blue Mosque but the city is constituent and always has been constituent for many different kind of parts of the world and um, parts of the, of the nation and without recognizing that these things occur, we're going to lose them, and that would be a terrible shame. Um, so in order to protect globally significant historic sites, we have to the awareness of local ones. Um, as the government turns away from kind of westernization, away from ideas of kind of formalization of, of um, heritage products and, and, and the West as a guiding light, basically, um, that could also transfer quite easily into the rejection of things like UNESCO um, in the same way that the government is more or less rejecting the EU now. Um, and in doing so, the transience of the kind of underlying material in the city, it produces a threat because without the people there actually on the streets protecting that, protecting these values and protecting the actual, their own personal heritage, it's going to go and there's nothing that we're going to be able to do to stop that. Anyway, so I hope that that wasn't too fast for you.
and we'll be having a question.